I just turn into like a turkey apparently. Hey everyone, it's Hannah and welcome back to the Corner of Craft podcast. This is episode 78. I looked it up just this second ago. This is my second time trying to open this video because I didn't look this is a knitting and rarely crochet podcast, but it happens, just rarely, um, in which I talk to you all about the projects that I'm knitting, the, the yarn and knitting accessories, yarn craft accessories that I've acquired, and um, yeah, it's a fortnightly podcast, so feel free to subscribe if that sounds like something you'd be interested in. Like I've already said, my name is Hannah. I'm coming at you today from a changeable weather-wise Nottingham here in the UK, England specifically. Currently it's very sunny, but it's also got some dark clouds out there. So I know that rain is probably forecast and I have the conservatory door open, which is right behind you. So I should probably get close that just in case the rain does start. If you would like to follow me on social media, please feel free. Links can all be found in the description box below, along with any other information that I think you might need. I've got my tiny sunshine shop sunflower earrings on. I've got my critical roll, bold parchment shears t-shirt on. I have a hand knit cardigan that my mother made for my husband, but he decided that the yarn was too jazzy for him, even though he wore it to Yarndale and a, a, a stranger complimented him on it. Um, but I have commandeered it for myself because I thought, well, if you're not going to wear it, I'm going to wear it because it's got old man buttons. Old man buttons. And I love it. And it's cabled. Cable down the sleeve, cable down the front and on the back. So yeah, I've stolen it because it fits. Ooh, I need to brush my hair. I am the business owner behind the corner of craft. I make small hand beaded stitch markers, but I also dye yarn in colors inspired by the game Dungeons and Dragons under the title Chromatic Yarns. Um, so yeah, I've started dyeing up the advent colorways already. So that's very exciting. They are currently drying. Um, turns out I can only dye two colorways at a time because then my two drying racks are full. Thank you so much to everyone who did purchase an advent calendar last week on Saturday. Um, it truly means a lot to me and I can't believe that I've sold them. So thank you. I am having a, another batch of um, pre-orders, the last 25 spots, um, on the 12th of June at 9am, so uh, UK time, obviously. So be sure to set your alarms for that. But um, yeah, I hope that you're all well. It's a bit of a weird time here in the UK because England, mm, well, the whole of the UK, I believe, England's especially, uh, that I know about because I'm not au fait with everywhere. But things are starting to open up again uh, before we could only sort of meet each other outside in gardens and things like that. But now we can actually have people in our house. We bought this house seven months ago. We moved in seven months ago. Can you believe it's been seven months and I still haven't unpacked? I feel like we've just moved in somewhat. Um, but seven months. And we've only had one person other than ourselves in this house and that was my sister on Christmas day and that was it. So, yeah, we can now have people in the house which means I actually need to tidy it. <laughs> my parents are coming up I mean, they'll be here by the time you're watching this video, actually, because I'm pre-recording this. But they, um, Thursday, they're coming up, and yeah. It's a bit weird. We're gonna have people in our house. I think I'm just going to be, like, very mentally exhausted once they go home, because I've spent the last year of my life essentially by myself the whole time, because Mario's been going to work. He had three weeks off in once lockdown first happened, when they decide, like, decided where they were going with the business and how they were gonna deal with it. He had three weeks off. And then, yeah, he's been working a lot ever since. And then he comes home tired and then he's not super chatty. So I've, <laughs> I've not really had a whole lot of conversation or seeing people for the last year. So I think having two extra people staying in my house for five days is going to be mentally exhausting, but also quite welcome, quite excited to show people around the house, but at the same time, not really that excited because then I have to tidy the house. We've done some, we've done some, but I've just got stuff everywhere. 
it's not fun. Anyway, you didn't join me for me to, um, you kind of did, natter non-stop. Um, yesterday I fell over, I'm not going to talk about it too much, but um, I tripped over outside and smashed a couple of things. Um, but managed to not chip my nail varnish, so that was my accomplishment of the day. Um, oh, I have eyeliner on my finger. But yeah, I banged my elbow on my knee and it was pretty, uh, pretty traumatic. But, you know, I'm fine. Um, the tea of the day in my beautiful Silver Spot Ceramics mug is, oh my goodness, could you have imagined if I tripped and smashed this mug, I'd actually be heartbroken? I'd be so sad. Oh my goodness, that would have been awful. Okay, this mug is never going outside. Um, we have a Yorkshire Tea Biscuit Brew going on at the minute. I have already had a Bird and Blend Love Potion this morning. I'm trying really hard to get through my Bird and Blend stash. Now I'm not an affiliate with Bird and Blend. They're not sending me free tea all the time, which is both great and annoying. It's great because now I actually am trying to um, use a lot of tea. We cleared out so much tea when we moved and it's already filling back up. So I'm actually using things up and finishing things now and it's quite cathartic. I don't know if that's the word. I've used it. I haven't. don't know if that's the word I want. You know when you say a word and then you just think, is that the word? I don't know if that's the word. So we're going to start with finished objects. I finished this yesterday. I treated myself to an evening of knitting, feeling sorry for myself and watching Critical Role when Mario went to bed at, I don't know, what, seven o'clock? Caught by seven? Stupidly early. Um, so the knitting is finished, but it's not actually a finished object because I still need to trim my ends off and block it. But this is the Flax Light. It's tiny, it's a baby one. Um, it's for a couple of our friends who had a baby. This is the six month to one year size. It looks quite small. Mm -hmm. But yes, um, it's very pretty and very pink. So the contrast color is Chromatic Yarns, my own hand dyed yarn on my Merino sock base, which is 8515 Superwash Merino Nylon um, in the color Sugar Plum Fay. And then the body color is Giddy Yarn in the strawberries and vanilla cupcake colorway that she has recently relaunched along with all of the other cupcake colorways from that collection so if that's something you're interested in go check out giddy yarns i forgot to say podcast notes they're linked in the description box below and in the top pinned comment so if you want any more information or links to anything that i'm talking about please go and check there none of the links link directly to ravelry and if they do i will specify but i haven't done any direct links to ravelry for the last few months, so, because I know that it's not um, super user friendly and if somebody clicks through, goes on Ravelry and then has a seizure or has a migraine that doesn't go away for months, I do not want to be responsible for that. Um, yes, Giddy Yarns, it's a very pretty colourway, very pretty. So it's not blocked, so please excuse my uneven stitches, but we have stunning speckles going on, really pretty. This is the Flax Light pattern. It's my go-to baby knit pattern. Um, and it's knit out four ply. And I think I knit one, I think my tension changed between knitting one sleeve and the other sleeve because like one sleeve's a little tighter, but it's fine, they're the same length. Um, yeah, it's by Tin Can Knits and it is a free pattern um, available on Ravelry. And they have a website, so I'm guessing it's available on there as well. I used 3.75 millimeter higher, higher sharps to knit the body, three millimeter for all of the ribbing. I did a German twisted cast on to cast on. It's my go-to cast on. It's not just the one I always do. And then I did, a, I did, is it called the surprisingly stretchy cast off? Where you like knit one, purl one, and then purl those two together, and then knit one and knit two stitches together. Um, it does make a slightly flared cuff, which I know some people will hate, but I don't mind it. It's for a baby. I thought it's important that it's stretchy because then it can be cuffed should it need to be. Um, you know, all the ends are woven in and yeah, I just need to block it. Um, yeah, I even made sure that I sewed up all my uh, holes under the armpits because no matter how many stitches I pick up under those armpits I always get holes under them. I know people say, oh just pick up two extra stitches and then just decrease them on the first round. I've done that and I still get holes. <sighs> Sorry, I sounded like an ass just then. But yes, 
I've done that so many times before and I still get holes. So now I just sew them up because NBD. And I quite like, we, well, I like weaving in ends. We've established this. This is a long established fact from me by now. Um, so yeah, c'est pas un problème pour moi to sew up some holes. Basically. Okay, that's my only finished object. I know, I know. But I do have a new cast on. I'm gonna talk about the new cast on first, I think. Yes. Living in my the Little Blue Robin project bag. Oh, Charlotte has, the owner, has a logo now and it's really pretty and she's gonna get labels printed and I'm very excited um, to see her business. Like, take flight, get it? Because it's a Robin. Uh, but yeah, I believe she won't be doing like branded stuff. Could be wrong. This was just a trial bag because we have a nice firm base. So it sits up nicely and also means you can sit it on a, I don't have a dirty surface, but you can sit it on a dirty surface and it won't, you know, get too dirty. And needles won't poke through it. Because I love using high, high sharps, um, they can poke through project bags and it's a right pain in the foot. So. I have a new cast on, it's a friend's birthday in a couple of months. Then I thought, you know what, I'm gonna knit them a sock. So I'm keeping it vague because I'm pretty sure they don't watch my channel at all. It would be weird if they did. Cause they, oh no they have, maybe. I, I mean, I don't know if they watch my channel but I'm gonna keep it vague. Um, this is, was meant to be um, vampiric touch but I got too impatient for the purple to fully exhaust and then added the final colour and just whacked it back in then it came out way too purple oh what a surprise uh, but it's a really pretty colour so I kept it and this is on my merino sock base so it's wonderfully soft and thought I'd cast on a new sock and a lot I posted a picture on Instagram and people said they really like the yarn colourway so I might try and recreate it I know what I did, I just need to be impatient. So, I cast on a, oh it kind of matches my nails, blueberry waffle sock uh, because the yarn is so dark you can't really see it. Um, it's, so this is a free pattern on Ravelry, I'm really sorry. Um, but it, I'll link it to the original blog post uh, where it's shared and it's designed for a DK sock but it's a four stitch repeat so you can do it on any. I did 64 stitches on 2.5 millimeter needles and it's a ribbed sock which means it's nice and stretchy which is a great for a gift sock because I don't know the circumference of everyone's leg. I did 15 rounds of one by one rib um, like a loon. I don't know why I did chose one by one but I did. We, we're going with it. We have a delightful little corner of craft stitch marker on it. My little wizard friend, he has, he was, he's got some mistakes on him, so I got to keep him. Oh, he's one bent. I'm sorry. I apologise. Straighten up. I mean, that could just be the shape of it. Um, yeah, I used a couple of the wrong colour beads in it. So, I've got to keep him. Hooray. Um, and yeah, I subbed out the heel and put in a new depth heel instead. I only increased by four stitches, and in hindsight, I should have... I've got even amount of turns on each side as stitches in the middle. In hindsight, I should have done fewer turns on the side and more stitches in the middle, but you know, that's fine. It will fit, hopefully, um, because I don't know intimate details about my friend's feet. Um, yeah, so I don't know if people have a high arch or not of my friend's feet. I know that I do, but I don't know if my friends do, so I just try and increase by a couple and see if it works. Um, but yeah, I'm onto the foot, so half of it's just plain knitting, and then the top half is the pattern, and it's just a really good meditative knit pattern, and yeah, it's just nice, it's just a nice, just a nice pattern, and yarn combo. It's just a, it's just a good pattern. I have knit this before, I have knit this pattern before, but I couldn't, I don't think the blueberry pattern, ugh, I got hair on my face. I don't think the blueberry waffle sock pattern worked, like the link didn't work the first time I tried to knit it, so I had to use like a hat pattern or something, I don't know, but works now, so. Huzzah! It's very easy. Very memorable. You'll get it after you've done it once. My tea is too warm. I cannot drink it comfortably. So living in my other, the little blue rod bin project bag, like this is my sister's 
project bag company that's coming soon so yes I'm promoing it because why not support your family um, and I got my critically cute pins on it very sweet little wooden critical role themed pins and we have my no faded sweater we're still going on it I know I was hoping it would be finished by now and I feel like I have put a fair amount in on it but it just doesn't really seem to be growing so since I last podcast I've knit that much but it's because I keep stopping to measure it and then it's casting on a new sock and god knows what um, so this is the So Faded sweater pattern by Andrea Mowry. Um, only I'm not fading anything and I'm just knitting it out of one colour and that colour is Down Sheepy Lane, forgot your business name for a second there Deb, Down Sheepy Lane in the Faded Woods colourway on her bamboo sock base. And yeah, it's a really pretty autumnal colour that I really like and really want to start wearing but I cannot as yet. I'm just on the slog of knitting the body. Ugh, I need to find a jumper upstairs that I think, I've got a jumper upstairs that I think is going to, um, is about the same dimensions that I want it to be. So I need to measure that body and see how long I want it to be. But I think I'm almost there. I'm so close to being there, I must be. And then I'm gonna go back and make my sleeves longer. I'm gonna do it because I have the yarn too. And I think it will just look so much better if the sleeves are at least below the elbow, even, you know, three quarter length. I think it will be better. Oh, it's just the sweater that never ends. It never ends. But really pretty. Um, yeah, I could even do the sleeves two at a time if I wanted to, but we'll see. I'm still enjoying it, but it is just a bit of a slog uh, because there's so many stitches on it and I've got so many stitch markers on it. <laughs> I've got all of these, most of them from Yarnistry Shop, one from myself. And I also have more from Yarnistry. I have a little strawberry going on. It's one of mine. And um, a little cream egg cupcake from Kawaii Studios. And then a chicken and a butterfly also from me. Delightful. They all have a purpose. Strawberry marks the beginning of the round, chick marks midway round the round, the cupcake marks where I was on the last podcast, the um, butterfly marks like 10 inches down so I, I didn't have to, so I could kind of see that it was growing. And then the sleeves all mark where my decreases are and I've kept them in in case for, you know, when I want to extend my sleeves. But yeah, Ugh, so much body. But yeah, I need to read the instructions because I have a feeling that there are short rows on the back and I don't think I want them I think I just want it straight so I need to have a look at that jumper upstairs that I want to compare it to and um, measure it up against it and see if they're akin to one another so the I am alternating skeins as you should do whenever you knit with hand dyed indie dyed yarn if you are knitting something that requires more than one skein I did not alternate skeins here because it was small and required much less than one skein um, I uh, socks, I do not alternate skeins because they require less than a skein. Jumpers, where I know I will be requiring more than one skein because I am larger than a baby or a small child, um, I alternate skeins and that way you don't get a harsh line when you join on your new skein and also you don't get pooling which can also happen sometimes when you're using yarn and it's, that's been dyed in some techniques. Uh, for example, I can see this maybe it doesn't show up on camera the top has it seems to have a lot more darker speckles than the bottom does and it's just the way the yarn has been dyed and that's fine it's not a huge issue I'm not bothered in any way by it because it's still super pretty but um, alternating skeins means that it won't just be heavily speckled and then a patch of slightly lighter speckled because the lovely people that dye all this beautiful yarn we're not machines. We cannot guarantee it's going to be 100% the same every single time. Someone very kindly left a review once on one of my yarns and says, oh, I bought, I bought this skein because I have another skein that I bought um, a while ago. And the, and the great thing with Hannah is I know that they'll, you know, they'll be consistent and match. I just, oh, it's a, it was a really lovely, co it was a really lovely review and a really lovely comment. But I mean, I am not a very scientific when it comes to dyeing yarn. 
Um, I, I write down all my stuff, but especially in the early days of me dying, I'd be like, half a green spoon of this, a tiny bit of this. And at the time I knew all that went. I do not know what that means now. I have different measuring things. Oh, also the jar that I used to use to mix all my dyes in, I would just have, a, I just had a little jar. It was completely impractical for the amount that I dye, but it's the one that I'd always, always used. I started using it in Germany, brought it back when I moved back. Um, yeah, I dropped it in the sink yesterday and it broke. So I broke three things yesterday. A sink, not, I didn't break the sink. Uh, a jar in the sink, a glass that then cut my finger, and also a bowl. Three things in one day. What is this? But yes, that is beside the point. So that is my no faded sweater. I'm very excited to start wearing it. I really want it to be done. Hopefully it will be done by the time I next talk to you. With my parents here, I imagine I'll get a fair amount of knitting time. So um, it should hopefully get done. Fingers crossed. And then I can cast on the new jumper. I need to um, knit a cardigan for myself because I realise I wear a lot of cardigans. So, because I want to show off my t-shirts. I used to wear blazers when I was in secondary school in sixth form. We didn't have to wear uniform in sixth form, which was, uh, we went to, sixth form wasn't compulsory when I went to school. Um, but it was like before university, it was, you went after your GCSEs, so after you turned 16 until you were 18, I think. I turned 18 in my second year of sixth form, so it was year 12 and 13. Um, ooh, I almost fell off my chair. But yeah, I used to wear band t-shirts, men's t-shirts, graphic tees, that kind of stuff, um, with a blazer over the top, because I was that cool, but it was so practical. Um, I didn't even have to, I didn't even have to dress smart, but I just think, I just, I just wore it anyway. But yeah, that's everything that I've been knitting. I need to cast on something new. I want to cast on something new, but I don't know what. I might try and dye some yarn up for it. Oh, I did find that really nice cable cardigan. I have also found a really pretty, a couple of really pretty actually, crochet tops that I'd be tempted to make. So maybe that will happen. I did some, I did some, I haven't given up Ravelry. I will be honest, I haven't. It's the perfect place for me to find new patterns. But I also know that that's not the most convenient place to find new patterns for everyone. But, so I'm going to do, show you, it's just a picture, it's not anything of Ravelry. But if you are sensitive to Ravelry, um, maybe look away for the next, I'll tell you when you can come back. So this, I have not showing it yet. This pattern is the Rosebud Raglan by Knits and Knots. Knits and Knots, as in N-O-T-S. And this is what it looks like, showing it now. And it's just a really nice crochet jumper. Is there a close? Yeah, it's a really nice crochet jumper. Let's see if I can get to focus on it. Um, you can look back. It uses, it says it uses worsted weight yarn, but the yarn that it lists is a Lion brand jeans, is the yarn that they, she used. But, um, that's the same meterage as my Sturdy DK yarn, so I could use that, which is exciting. I've never swatched in crochet before, so that will be a fun experience. Um, and it goes up to a... 62 inch bust, which we love a size inclusive pattern because way too many crochet tops are not size inclusive and they go up to not even my size. Um, and I'm kind of like a medium, medium chunk, you know, it's rid absolutely ridiculous. Um, but yeah, it's really pretty. It's meant to be fitted, but not tight. So she has, um, crocheted hers, I keep wanting to say knitted, it's not natural. Uh, she's crocheted hers to have zero ease. Um, oh, but it's just, it's just pretty and a bit different and crochet, which I do want to start doing more. So I might treat myself and maybe start crocheting a jumper. Yeah, she's got, yeah, she's got some really pretty patterns. So maybe I'll have a look and also have a look to see if anyone's doing like, um, mohair held together with something in crochet. I think that would be fun. But yeah, 
that's all I have to say about all the things that I'm knitting. I'm just going to briefly talk to you about business things, business things. So, like I said, I have a business called The Corner of Craft and I sell the things that I make. Um, you may not be aware of that because I have not done a proper formal shop update in a couple of months now. Um, I did my last one at the end of March, um, so I basically took April off and also subsequently I'll be taking May off. This is partly because um, I was getting a bit burnt out having to like work towards a deadline, but I also need the deadline in order to do the work. It's kind of a, a vicious cycle. Yeah, I don't really know what to do with my schedule. It's like I need someone in a room with me so I actually do what I need to be doing. Um, but I will be partaking in the Wool Monty at home. I completely forgot it was happening. Uh, so my next shop update will be on the 12th of June, which coincidentally is the same day that my advent calendars, the final batch of advent calendars goes live. It was not the best planning that I'd ever had because I did not know that the Wall Monty at home was happening because I forgot because my memory is actually terrible. Actually terrible. So that's on me. Um, I don't know what time that my update will be yet, I have not finalised that, but it will not be at the same time as my advent calendars because I feel like that that will lead to people buying an advent calendar and something else, even though you can't buy the advent calendar with anything else because um, they're shipping out in October, so... you got to pay for the ex different postage for the things. Um, yes. I was gonna say something. But yeah, I will be having like a formal shop update then. And then I don't know when my next one is going to be after that. So if there's anything that you want, be sure to snag it. Um, because yeah, I need to get the dye shed sorted. I've been given a phone number of a builder by my neighbor. It took me three weeks to work up the courage to go across the, ro across the road and ask my builder if he knew, uh, ask my neighbor if he knew a builder. He definitely did. He was, he, I'm pretty sure he is a builder. Um, and then now I need to work up the courage to call said builder for him to come and have a look at the dye shed and see what he's doing. Because I thought that it just needed plastering and boarding, but a lot of you lovely people said, hey, you might need insulation. I was like, mm, hadn't thought of that, so I might need insulation. Um, but it, oh, I, just need to, I just need to call him. But, um, yeah. I don't want to be like, I have anxiety, because I've never been diagnosed, but at the same time phone calls are the worst. Um, so yeah, I need to like die up advent calendars and get sorted on that. Um, in July, I should be, fingers crossed, um, putting up the 12 days of Stitchmas, which is my six stitch markers, six mini skeins combo. Um, putting them up for sale in July, I think. And then I also need to work on my Christmas Eve cast on box uh, because I actually need to dye the yarn for that because I am chatting with a lovely designer who is going to be designing a sock pattern. So yeah, yeah. Because that box, I don't think that box in particular will be a surprise. I think that one will be, you see what you get. Um, fingers crossed. Because I really want to put some tea in it, but depending how early Burn and Blend come out with their Christmas teas. We'll see. I might not be able to. Oh. Anyway. Me saying all of that out loud has now stressed me out slightly, but that's fine. That's fine. Just need to get on it and do it. It'll be easier once I've got the dye shed. That's what I keep telling myself. And I've bought some more drying racks because... I wanted to dye another colourway yesterday for the advent, but I had no space no space in which to dry it. Fun. And also, once the weather turns warmer, I'll be able to dry stuff outside and it will dry much quicker, so I'll be able to dye, like, a few days in a row, as opposed to now where I have to dye and then wait for it to dry, and then dye, and then wait for it to dry, and blah, blah, blah. Anyway, I'm talking out of my feet. Um, personal life, not a whole lot's been happening, standard lockdown life. Um, my parents are currently here. I mean, not right now, but they will be when you're watching this, and I'm sure we'll be having a great time, even though the rains is not never ceasing, she says as the sun comes out. 
but yeah, the rain the rain seems to never be ending this month, uh, which is very frustrating, but such is life. Um, a lovely rainy May. I'm sure the farmers are grateful for it, but it would be nice to have rain with some days of sun, you know? It's like we got our outside, oh, we got an outside table, we built the outside table, that's what made me fall. Um, and since then it's it's rained pretty much a lot, so we've only used it a couple of times. But we're trying to make sure we use it when we can. And also it's nice, because usually we watch telly while we eat, but it's really nice to not watch telly while you eat, so you actually talk to each other, so... I just turn into like... Blah, 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 blah. A turkey, apparently. <laughs> I talk a lot. Anyway, I'm gonna go, so... <laughs> I'm talking out of my feet. Thank you so much for watching. Like I said in the beginning, if you'd like to follow me on social media, links can all be found in the description box below, along with any other information that I think you might need, like the links to the podcast notes, in which I go into more details about the needle size I use, the yarn that I use, where you can buy it, the patterns, as in buy the yarn that I used, and the project bags that I use, and all of that. Um, even video tutorials that I use, for example, the helical knitting video tutorial that I use, um, I don't even think I mentioned that I was doing helical knitting. I think that I got distracted talking about how you need to alternate skeins. Anyway. <laughs> I feel like I'm a bit of a mess. Standard. Um, yes, feel free to subscribe. It would be lovely for you to stick around. I'm currently trying to upload three times a week. I cannot guarantee it every week, but, the, you know, I'm trying. Um... Yeah, it would be lovely if you hit subscribe and leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you've been working on since the last time we spoke. Did you keep your pinky promise? Oh, some of you made a pinky promise. You better be reporting back on the pinky promise. You better have finished it. You know it. If you don't know what I'm talking about, watch the last podcast. <laughs> And yes, please give the video a thumbs up. That would be lovely. Thank you. And with all that being said, thank you so, so much once again for watching. And I will see you very soon in Monday's video. Bye.